Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Today I'm going to review the Western Mountaineering Bison Sleeping Bag. Is this possibly the ultimate sleeping bag on the market? Let's find out. Is the Western Mountaineering Bison Sleeping Bag possibly the ultimate sleeping bag on the market? Well, that's what we're going to discuss in this video. But before I go on, if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button, that helps support my channel. And also, please leave me a comment and let me know how I'm doing. Give me some ideas for other videos for me to do. Or just email me. There's a link below to get a contact form. I appreciate it. So let's get right into it. As you can see, this Western Mountaineering Bison Sleeping Bag is nothing less than huge. Now, I bought the six foot six version for my expedition across Antarctica where I set a world record for surviving the longest expedition to the South Pole. I started on November 1st and ended on January 22nd. Uh, through that I went some through the most extreme storms I've ever been in. It was minus 60 raging wind. I mean I couldn't even get out of my tent. It was insane and this bag kept me going. So I'm going to show you what the scale of the bag is, the size of it uh, versus me, and just to give you an idea of what this bag is, and we'll talk about the features. So I'm six foot tall, and I bought the six foot six bag. However, if you notice, if I lay down, this bag is substantially longer than I am because the inside of the bag is where the measurement starts, and you'll see that the hood here actually has quite a bit of space that's taken up by down as well as the foot area. The actual bag inside is about six foot six, so let me measure the total length of the bag just to show you how big this thing is. Now, it's so big, I can't even show it on the camera. I need a wide angle adapter or something. That's crazy. So if I'm roughly at the end of the bag there. The bag is in totality seven feet long. This thing is huge. So if you have a tiny little six foot tent, this thing is going to be mushed up. You're going to have to uh, sit diagonally or something. So it's really, really big. The girth across the chest area, the maximum length is roughly 30, well, it looks like about 31 inches. So it's really, really thick there. And just to give you a thickness measurement of estimate, let me get my rulers here. Just to give you a thickness estimate, I'm going to use my highly scientific ruler technique here. And it's about 11 inches there and over 12 inches at the thickest point of the chest. At the foot area, the bag is probably as thick, 12 inches. So this thing is huge. Now I'm going to do a comparison video of this bag between that and the Puma, but we'll get that to that another time. So you'll notice that this is a left hand zip bag. Western Mountaineering makes a left or a right hand zip bag depending on your preferences. I bought the left because even though I'm right handed, for some reason it's easier for me to unzip on the left. I don't know why, but that's just the way it works. But in the end, that actually worked very well for using my bathroom bottle, or they call it the pee bottle, at night because the entrance to my tent is actually on the left-hand side. So that works pretty well. So let's do a thickness measurement of the down here. I've let this bag fluff up for quite a bit. So I'm going to try and do a thickness measurement. And I'm going to hold the ruler here and then mush my plastic ruler in here because I don't want to damage the bag. So let's see if I can even do this. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it's about, uh, based on that height, 11 plus inches when I mush the bag down completely. Now, it's really hard for me to do that, but the, the actual rating of the bag is 10 and a half or 11 inches of, of thickness. But if I measure from the top here, it's something like 11. In the middle of the body where the bag is here, I'm going to mush this down and again about 11 inches of thickness. And then in the foot area, I'm going to try and be scientific here just to show you. I'm trying to do this legit. 
and again 11 inches of down so that's pretty crazy alrighty now you'll see the end of the bag here it is made in the USA so if that's important to you it's a that's a thing and it's a minimum 90% goose down so uh, that's a pile of stuff there and let me see if I can try and weigh this bag for you this is not going to be easy simply because the bag is so absurdly huge that I probably won't be able to get it on my scale but I will do my best so I'm waiting for the scale to zero out something like that four and a half four pounds ten ounces so extremely heavy but it's a minus 40 degree bag now I received an email recently from a guy in Norway his name's uh, Daniel I believe and he asked whether he should choose the Puma or the bison I'm gonna get into that too in another video simply because there there's subtleties that I don't want to get into a review of here so I'm going to turn the bag around so you can see the zipper and you can see the zipper here and it's a it's a 7 8th uh, 7 8th long zipper it doesn't go all the way to the foot area and I'm glad it doesn't just because that allows cold in but you'll see the zipper operate here and it has a double zip on the end of the sleeping bag where you can pull it apart I never do that simply because then I have to put the thing back together and there isn't much value for me in there but if it gets too hot all right let me struggle with the zipper for a minute just to show you it's actually easier if I'm in the bag to do this all right there we go okay zipper activated it does have an in zipper here unzip here and so if it's a bit hot you can actually unzip and stick your feet out uh, usually if you're in this sort of location where it's this cold you won't be doing that using this sort of bag now you can see that from the bottom of the zipper to the end of the bag is approximately 14 inches more of down and loft so let me get in this bag and I'm going to show you what it's like to actually be in the bag and every day I would uh, unzip it and let me open it up just to show you what the bag looks like inside all right and I'll show you a couple features there but you can see as I'm standing in this thing or sitting and laying in it I'm already starting to disappear into the bag so it's actually pretty pretty lofty all right so I'm gonna disappear in here all right oh, yeah. okay so here I am my feet still have quite a bit of distance before I uh, touch the bottom of the bag so I'm sitting up there's still a good four or five inches of headroom above me my feet aren't contacting the bottom of the bag now why would I want that <sighs> simply because when you're in extreme environments you're going to have to put your hot water bottles your electronics all your stuff in your sleeping bag you don't want it perfect fitted at home I know it's an extra weight consideration oh sweating already to uh, have extra room and weight in the bag but when you've got five water bottles in here your electronics your your phone whatever else you need in here all of a sudden this bag becomes pretty full now as far as shoulder width uh, if I zip this up all the way uh, it's, then zip it up all the way I shall there's still plenty of room I can completely put my arms out to the sides I've got my hands flat spread out and flat spread out I can push the bag away on both sides so that's pretty good okay so let me show you a couple other features of this bag now this is gore wind stop so it's actually kind of hard to use because it captures that air and it makes it uh, a little bit of an <laughs> ordeal but you can see that it has a double baffle system one is for the neck and oh uh, has a little bit different system than others I'm already starting to overheat Whew. come on so what this does is if I don't punch myself in the face this allows me to create a complete baffle system it's got an opposing velcro and this is pretty slick all right 
And yes, you're going to have to do this every time you get into your bag, but if you're willing to deal with minus 40 degree temperatures and below, you'll deal with this. So you literally mate this here. And now I can use the neck baffle, completely draw this down. Unlike other bags, this thing is awesome. It's a major consideration. And the neck baffle, I can completely baffle my neck. There we go. And I don't even have the hood on me. And what this neck baffle does is that prevents the cold air from flowing down over my body every time I wriggle around. Now, once you get this on, oh boy, I'm getting hot. You put the hood over, hopefully you can still hear me. And so usually what I do is I do the hood first and then the neck baffle, but just to show you what it's like to actually camp in the extreme winter is I will have my bag literally cinched down to this point. Can you actually see my mouth there? So there you go, that's how this bag works for that. So let me get out of here before I die because it's 60 degrees in the house. So it's like uh, pretty much ugh, being in Phoenix, all right? so. I'm gonna take the camera around and show you some of the different features as well. So this double Velcro system completes the loop for the neck baffle, and that's pretty sweet. So I'm gonna unzip this here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, before, I, before I do that, let me show you standing on the bag with my feet, just, uh, just how much or down is in the bag. This is another request I've received from other people of standing on the bag just to give a more uh, visual feel of what the compression is like. Also, there is this little strap and Velcro here that closes the neck or the head baffle completely. So I'm gonna pull this out, fluff it up, and I will stand on it just to give you an idea. There you go. So that is how much down is in the bag. Alrighty. Hopefully that was useful to you. Now I'm going to show you a couple of the different features of this bag. And the first here, well my head will disappear, is again it has a Velcro strap that you simply tag down and that prevents the zipper from getting completely in your face. So that is very nice. It has a solid non-bungee draw cord for the face so you can compress that thing down all the way and let me unzip it here a bit on the inside it has a full neck baffle system and the way as I showed before to make that neck baffle work is you simply undo the velcro and undo the velcro and you can see the opposing velcro here and you attach the Velcro to itself in opposition. And what that does is that actually completes the neck baffle system. And the draw cord is somewhere over here. It's right here. Now the neck baffle draw cord is a bungee, so you don't accidentally choke yourself out. And this has a draw lock. So again, you can see this whole system about closure here. So that's a bungee versus the face baffle, which is a solid cord. It doesn't stretch at all. All right, so let me open this here. All right. Now this is all Gore Wind Stop. It is not waterproof, okay? And that, that's a key thing. It's water repellent, but it isn't waterproof because you would never be able to get the air out of the bag easily. Now inside, they have a baffle along the zipper and let me show you this key thing here. This baffle along the zipper prevents air from leaking into or out of the zipper. And in fact, this design basically is a double baffle where you could see this here, this tube. Okay. And that tube basically closes up the zipper so that there is no exposure to you and the zipper. This baffle completely seals that. That's on the Puma. That's on my antelope bag, and that is on the Bison Gore Wind Stop. So you can see this weird tube of down. That is everything. So 
cheaper sleeping bags, I mean, this is extreme, but lesser sleeping bags don't have this baffle system. And as a consequence, they really get cold unnecessarily. So this adds a lot of expense to the design, but it works quite well. Okay. I'm going to zip that up here. All right, so those are the basic features of the bag. And you'll see the back. Now this has 90 days of hard use in Antarctica on it. As you can see, it's doing very, very well. It uh, doesn't have any tears or anything in it. A tiny bit of the down foofs out here. Now, if you're, if you're somebody that cares about ethical down, know that the way Western mountaineering gets their down is they're not out with a shotgun blasting geese left and right because there'd be blood all over your down. But what they do is they uh, work with farms in Europe to have the, the farm raise the geese to egg laying age, age, then the geese go into these little barns and whatnot where they lay their eggs, and then over the year they molt their down as the temperature changes and the seasons change. So the company goes in and collects the down that is molted off those geese all over the place, and this is a 850, 900 plus fill down, and that's how they get their down. So they're not out there with a shotgun blasting geese out of the sky because that is definitely not sustainable. So if that sort of thing matters to you, that is how Western Mountaineering gets all their down for all their sleeping bags. So just a consideration. Uh, the Gore Wind Stop, a lot of times I'll be in a tent and breathing, and this part does get frosty but it's not a big deal over a long expedition. It's not that much of a problem. But what I do is I completely unzip the sleeping bag every morning as soon as I get up and I'm ready to get out of my sleeping bag and I turn it completely inside out and let the bag air out. I wasn't doing that the first eight, 10 days in Antarctica and I noticed the down got a little bit more compressed. So every morning I open it up completely turn the foot box inside out even and I'll show you what that looks like there you go so there's the foot box completely turned inside out and you can see the uh, design there and also uh, I need to talk about that tape but there you go and by letting your sleeping bag air out every morning you're going to let that moisture get out of the down and your bag will stay lofty a lot longer so this is another uh, key feature of these bags is that they have a thick or a wide stiff tape along the seam not on this side but uh, on the inside there's a stiff seam uh, where the zipper doesn't snag as easily into the fabric so this is a minor point but it actually makes a big difference so there's a th a stiff seam here it's hard to see but you can actually feel it and then you can see this stiff seam here and that prevents the zipper from snagging inside the bag now I have had the zipper snag on the outside of the bag and all of my bags have that but that's just kind of the way it works also uh, the zipper inside does not have a zipper pull but the outside does so when I'm in the sleeping bag I actually use the outside zipper to drop my sleeping bag and it's so much easier because that thick baffle makes it extremely difficult to get in there and try and zip it. Instead I just reach my arm, pull up, wriggle around and then pull that out. So that's a really good hack for you there. Uh, you can use a Sea to Summit thermal reactor and you can get maybe five, five no more than 10 degrees of warmth out of this bag so you could easily extend it to 50 degrees if you're in extreme extreme conditions like in Svalbard in or Antarctica or Greenland or somewhere you can always use the uh, Mount Western Mountaineering VBL vapor barrier liner hot sack and I had to use this a couple times in Antarctica because even though this bag is minus 40 degrees I was still cold why was I cold I had a lung infection so I was badly sick like coughing up blood check out antarctic tears and you'll see what that's about but the storm was so severe it sucked the heat off my tent so there it was just super super miserable so i had the the hot sack inside 
of my sleeping bag. Now I'll show you what the hot sack length looks like. So you literally get into this hot sack, which is basically an overblown uh, mylar garbage bag that's really, really expensive. And then you get inside your either your puma or your bison bag and that's actually the ultimate final way to keep warm there is one other bag on the market that is warmer than the western mountaineering bison and that is the feathered friends uh it's minus 60 it's called the snowy owl that that has an additional 10 ounces of fill power so if you want to go sleep north of fairbanks in the winter outside without a tent that's a sleeping bag for you, but using this in Antarctica in pretty extreme conditions, this is pretty money. If I were going to Antarctica in the winter, then I'd have to get the, uh, the snowy down. So that, that's a whole other level of extreme. So you can see, if you need to extend the range of this, you just simply wriggle this into your sleeping bag, the vapor barrier liner. And that's what I did to add some extra warmth. They're not comfortable to sleep in, but they work. These guys, Cedar Summit, that actually works too to extend the range. Now, before I stuff this into the stuff sack, you'll see that Western Mountaineering gives you this laundry sack and that allows you to store the bag without compressing the down. Now, Western Mountaineering uh, says on their site, you can actually leave down compressed and it shouldn't damage it as long as the down is not wet. If the down is wet and you continuously leave your bag compressed, that's when the damage will occur. Now, this said, as you can see, this is insane just to get this thing in a laundry sack because of that gore wind stop. And you can see when I'm squashing this, what this is like just to store in the laundry sack. So even though the laundry sack is super huge, uh, I ideally leave the bison completely out and laid out if at all possible in the driest environment possible in the house. Now this was stored at a different location. So you can see this laundry sack is over full so it's even though it's super huge and you can see my waist there that's uh that's about how big it is now i'm going to show you what it takes to stuff the bison into the sea to summit compression bag i have the xl bag here and it barely fits in here it takes some effort so i'm going to begin doing this and of course i'll speed up the video so you don't watch me suffer for three or four minutes getting this in the bag, but you'll get an idea of how long this takes. Make sure that you begin stuffing the bag into the sack foot first. Otherwise, you'll never ever get it in there. So, ready to go? Let's start the timer and go. There you go, so it's not completely compressed, but just to give you an idea, took me two minutes and 37 seconds at 67 degrees, warm, comfortable, to jam this in my stuff sack. I will put a link below. Dude, this stuff sack ends up being 19 inches long, and the diameter is about 12 inches, so this is, and just for fun, I'll show you how to expand the sleeping bag, and I will time lapse this as well. And go. Oh, about 26 seconds, so that's how long it takes it to get out of that, that stuff sack. Not unreasonable. It takes two and a half minutes to get it in there. And there you go. That's the process of putting this massive sleeping bag into and then taking it out of the Sea to Summit XL stuff sack. I will put a link below to the stuff sack, the vapor barrier liner, the Sea to Summit 
the thermal reactor, so the vapor barrier liner, the thermal reactor, the XL stuff sack, and the bison. Have a good time with that. A very serious sleeping bag, only something that I would use on Denali or uh, the Arctic in the winter or Antarctica or Denali in the uh, Denali in the winter in the in, in the spring the normal climbing climbing season this bag is way too much so there you go the western mountaineering bison sleeping bag minus 40 degrees and uh, that temperature rating is based on a mid-range comfort there's a standard whatever it is uh, is, is probably high is probably minus 35 degrees and then the low is minus maybe minus 45 to 50 you know who knows but <laughs> there you go that is a western mountaineering bison sleeping bag my name is aaron linstout i'm a polar explorer and professional traveler please like comment and subscribe on the video let me know how i'm doing and leave a comment and uh, maybe i'll have some more ideas for sleeping bags to show you also please support me on venmo PayPal, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching.